Mythic Volcano Spirits The Big Question How do volcano myths help explain volcanic activity? An erupting volcano seems almost alive. It hisses, rumbles, and makes the ground shake. It's easy to understand why ancient cultures thought powerful spirits lived inside volcanoes. Belief in volcano gods helped people make sense of volcanic eruptions. Some believed that when volcanoes were quiet, it meant the volcano gods were content. Some people also believed that when volcanoes erupted, it meant the gods were angry. People tried to keep volcano gods happy with offerings of food, flowers, and animals. People told stories to help explain why unpredictable events like volcanoes occurred. Many stories included volcano gods as part of the explanation. These stories or myths were retold again and again. Over time, volcano myths became an important part of a culture's history and tradition. The myths were creative explanations for natural processes and events. Hawaii's Goddess of Fire Pele is the ancient Hawaiian goddess of fire and volcanoes. She is known for creating volcanic mountainsides and islands. When she unleashes fiery lava, she also destroys land and everything on it. Belief in Pele began centuries ago. Native Hawaiians believe the goddess lives in Kilauea, an active volcano on the island of Hawaii in the Hawaiian island chain. This Hawaiian volcano myth tells the story of how she came to make her home there. Long ago, Pele lived in the spirit world with her parents and many brothers and sisters. Pele was strong-willed and had a short temper. When she got angry, she caused things to burn and lava to erupt from the ground. Pele got along with most of her siblings, except for her sister, Namaka Okahai, the goddess of the ocean and seawater. Over time, Pele and Namaka Okahai became bitter enemies. Pele decided to find a new home, so she set off across Earth's ocean in a great canoe. Several of her brothers and her youngest sister, Hiaka, came with her. The canoe landed on Kauai, the northernmost island in the Hawaiian island chain. There, Pele met and fell in love with Lohiau, the island's king. She boldly asked him to marry her. After a moment's hesitation, Lohiau agreed. Who could say no to a goddess? Before the wedding could take place, however, Pele insisted on creating a suitable place for the couple to live. Pele's idea of a good home was a huge hole in the ground, warmed by fires of hot lava. Pele had a magic digging stick. When she jabbed the stick into the ground, a crater would open up in which volcanic fires burned. Pele began digging along Kauai's rocky coast. Every time she made a crater, seawater mysteriously flooded in and put out the flames. Much to her dismay, Pele discovered that her sister, Namaka o Kaha'ai, had followed Pele to Kauai. Namaka o Kaha'ai was trying to ruin Pele's plans to build a home and get married. Hoping to outsmart her hateful sister, Pele fled to Oahu, the next island in the Hawaiian chain. She took her youngest sister, Hiaka, and her brothers with her. Namaka o Kaha'i followed them, and once again she caused seawater to fill every crater Pele dug. So Pele kept moving, 
traveling to the islands of Molokai and then Maui. There, too, Namaka o Kaai had worked her watery magic. Time and again, she turned Pele's craters into cold, wet holes in the ground. Finally, Pele reached Hawaii, the largest island in the chain. Pele climbed the mountain called Kilauea and dug a crater at its top. The bright orange flames of volcanic fire flared and did not go out. Pele's crater on Kilauea was far above the sea, out of the reach of the ocean goddess. Pele was pleased with her new home. She sent Hiiaka to fetch her husband to be from Kauai. She told her little sister to be back in less than 40 days. She also warned Hiiaka not to fall in love with Lohiau herself. In turn, Hiiaka made Pele promise to protect a grove of beautiful trees that grew on Kilauea. Hiiaka adored the trees. She was afraid that if Pele lost her temper, she would send out rivers of lava to burn them down. The journey took much longer than Hiiaka expected. By the time she reached Kauai and found Lohiau, more than 40 days had passed. On the trip back to Hawaii, Hiiaka grew increasingly fond of Lohiau. She also grew increasingly afraid of how Pele would react to their being so late in returning. When Hiiaka finally reached Kilauea with Lohiau, she looked in horror on her beautiful forest. It was gone, burned to the ground by Pele's volcanic fire. To punish her older sister, Hiiaka kissed Lohiau. Enraged, Pele sent a huge river of lava streaming down the side of Kilauea. Lohiau was buried beneath it. Driven by the need for revenge, Hiiaka dug into the rocky side of the volcano. Lava began draining out and flowing out toward the sea. One of Pele's brothers stopped Hiiaka before all of Pele's volcanic fire drained away. Because so much lava had already been lost, the top of Kilauea collapsed. A great caldera, or bowl shaped depression, was left behind. It is still visible at the volcano's top. Two of Pele's brothers took pity on the dead king. And on Hiiaka, who truly loved him. They dug Lohiau out of the lava and brought him back to life. Hiiaka and Lohiau were married and lived happily ever after, while Pele remained in her lofty volcano home. Some people believe that Pele still lives in Kilauea. When the volcano erupts, they say it's a sign her fiery temper is flaring again. Princess Power In 1880, Mauna Loa erupted. A large lava flow crept down the mountainside toward the city of Hilo. The Hawaiian princess Ruth Kilikolani traveled to the scene as the lava neared the city. Princess Ruth stood directly in the path of the advancing lava. She recited ancient chants and made offerings to Pele. The next day, the lava flow stopped. This helped keep belief in Pele alive. The Origin of Crater Lake The Klamath Indians of the Pacific Northwest have a myth about the creation of Oregon's Crater Lake. This deep, nearly circular lake fills the large caldera of an ancient dormant volcano called Mount Mazama. Mazama is part of a chain of volcanoes that make up a portion of the Cascade Mountain Range. Scientists believe that Mazama's caldera formed during its last major eruption nearly 8,000 years ago. Rain and melted snow filled the caldera to create what came to be known as Crater Lake. 
the following Klamath myth about Mazama's eruption and the lake's formation has its roots in these geological events. Crater Lake in Oregon Long ago, the world was home to two great spirit chiefs. The chief of the below world, Monadalkni, lived inside the earth and ruled below ground. The chief of the above world, Sahali Tai ruled above ground from Earth's surface to the starry heavens overhead. Sometimes Monadalkni visited the above world. He climbed up through the inside of a snow-covered mountain and emerged from a hole at the top. From there, he could see far and wide. He could see the forests, the rivers, the lakes, and the camps of the Klamath people. One day, Monadalkni spotted the Klamath chief's daughter, Loha. Monadalkni thought Loha was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Immediately, he wanted her to be his wife. He came down from the mountaintop and proposed to Loha. He promised her eternal life if she would agree to marry him. Loha refused. So Monadalkni sent one of his below-world servants to ask again. The servant brought many gifts. He laid them out before Loha and tried to persuade her to marry his master. He reminded her that if she did, she would have eternal life and live in the mountain forever. Loha refused. She ran to her father and asked for help. The chief of the Klamath people called the tribal elders together. They all agreed that Loha should try to hide from Monadalkni, so she did. Monadalkni was very angry when he found out that Loha had refused him yet again. He raged inside his mountain, making it shake and rumble. He threw lightning bolts and spewed fireballs from his mouth. The top of the mountain exploded, which sent hot lava and choking clouds of ash raining down on the land. The Klamath people waded into streams and lakes, trying to escape Monadalkni's fiery revenge. They cried out to Sahali Tai for help. The chief of the above world came to the aid of his people. He fought Monadalkni, and the two spirits waged a violent, fiery battle. Sahale Tai eventually gained the upper hand and forced Monadalkni back down into his mountain. Sahale Tai caused the top of the mountain to collapse, forever shutting off this entrance to the below world. The Klamath elders prayed for rain. The rains came and put out the volcanic fires. Rainwater filled the caldera on the mountaintop, creating the high, deep body of water known today as Crater Lake.